Hey, Jamie and Lucas here from Fuel Motor today, and we're going to discuss some of the most popular topics that we encounter with the Downjet PowerVision products. The flash tuners are going to have the PV4, PV3, and the original PowerVision. So we're going to go over some of this stuff, and I'm going to kind of let Lucas take over. Uh, he does the majority of our uh, customer to uh, fuel motor relations on the on the remote tuning and all that stuff. So we're going to kind of let him take over, explain the differences, and. And I'm going to help out along the way. So, take yeah, it. there's a, a couple of Power Vision devices. So now the market, it's become a little bit more confusing what applications they're used for and uh, what the differences are between them. Uh, we're just going to outline some of the differences here. Uh, starting over here, this is probably the most popular one or has been in uh, the past. Power Vision, otherwise known as PV1B, PV2B, PV3B. It's a large touchscreen unit, a lot of people would know it. Um, you may also hear Dinojet or us refer to it as the PVOG. This is the first unit that Dinojet brought to market for Harleys for flash tuning. And uh, it has a couple of unique features. It has some on-device mapping adjustments you can make. It's also really commonly used by dyno tuners and people across the country to tune their buttons. It's the traditional touchscreen power vision that most people are used to using for a very long time. On-device features as well as software support for, for that unit. And again, a lot of the dyno tuners we talk about have traditionally used this product. It's been around since 2012. A very, very uh, good legacy product that uh, they do continue to make this fully supported. Yeah, we'll go on to the next. Yeah, the PV3 right here, this is uh, more uh, in line with what the original Power Vision has been. Uh, so this is still fully on device, um, nothing else involved. It has its own interface. It doesn't have a touch screen unit, but it has a full color TFT uh, display with some buttons on it. It's also a really robust unit. Same tunes essentially, the only difference being the, the actual file type. Although the files that you always used in these for over a decade, uh, we can convert to use in these as well as these. So really the tune support, library, all that is exactly the same. The, the user experience for the PV3 versus the original PowerVision are really close. The original PowerVision has uh, the touch screen, so a lot of people are used to navigating with that. Whereas the PV3, that has a navigable screen, but it's not touch screen. It's, uh, it is a TFT, so it's probably a little nicer in sunlight. Um, probably a little more robust as far as the way the unit is durable and things like that. And this one is actually used in a lot of the off-road applications and, and such where the original Power Vision was a Harley only device. But again, the very, very similar user experience for both. And despite some of the rumors and shops and things that the uh, stuff we see and read on internet forums and Facebook groups, both of these devices can really do the same thing. In fact, we can use the same tunes. Uh, amongst them. So there isn't really a lot of difference that way. And a lot of confusion shop shops are like, oh, the PV, PV3 can do this, only do this, or the original Power Vision because all that. Actually isn't the case. The same tuning files, same same definitions are in both for the tunes. So. Yep. But no limits between these devices or anything like that. There's virtually identical overlap in what these can do, especially from a tuning standpoint. Same goes for the PV4. So this is another one along with the PV3 that's kind of Dynajet's newest generation of devices. Uh, Harley's being the most popular still that they flash. Unlike these two, this is exclusively used with your phone um, as far as delivering the flash. So you still can use the same software as you use with PV3 if you want to open edit tunes. Um, you actually access everything through your account on the, in the software. So while you don't plug it into a computer like many people have come to be accustomed to with these, you do still just simply log into your account. Everything that's in your app and in your account with this device, you can access on the computer, open, edit files, send, share new tunes, all that sort of thing. So the uh, really only difference between this and this is that this you essentially use your phone as a remote control when it's plugged into the bike and you're flashing. These flash the same exact tunes. There is no difference if you flash a tune with this and, and, and this. That brings up another point. On the tunes, uh, we get a lot of calls and we see a lot of information out there. They say, oh, the original Power Vision that's unlocked and for off-road use only where the PV3 and PV4, that's all 50 state legal tunes locked down and all that. Well, it's not really the case. Here's where that comes from is Dynojet has a assortment of tunes for PV3 and PV4 that are going to be 49, some 50 state compliance, and they're going to be from Dynojet. Where the fuel moto tunes, they're going to be the same traditional off-road only unlocked tunes for, that we use for original Power Vision for the PV3 and PV4. So we have the same tunability with 3 and 4 as the original. You have equal tunability to all three devices. And just to touch base on the PV4 is 
Nobody was more skeptical than cloud-based tuning and file sharing than us because we rely so much every day on our network here and emailing tunes to customers and everything and in our database is triple quadruple backed up. So when the cloud-based tuning stuff came out, we're like, ah, we're real skeptical. But I'm telling you, after doing this um, for we're a few years in now on PV4, that is actually Fuel Moto's tuner of preference in-house with our stuff because A, we always have the tunes, we have them on the cloud. Um, B, it, it makes it super easy for us to just send a tune to a customer. You don't have to email. It just goes right straight to their Dynojet account. So when a customer buys a PV4 or we supply a tune to them, it goes right to their Dynojet account. They don't need to go by email. They don't need to download a device. They open the app and the tune is going to be there as an invitation waiting. They also get an email say the tune is coming to them. The other thing that this is kind of just coincidentally is we have all of our bikes here are licensed for, for the Power Visions and it used to be, oh, this Power Vision is married to that, married to that, and the license dropped, the license in. And so we found ourselves doing that because we jump bike to bike. The nice thing about PV4 is that it automatically, seamlessly sees the license if, for your Dynojet account. It doesn't even matter which PV4 device. It, it's not device specific. It's, it's license and machine specific. We have a, a PV4 plugged in. Any of these bikes here, they automatically see the license. And what I found is we have a lot of bikes where not only flashing tunes in, but say we check in compression or doing a test feature or something. It's so nice. You always have your phone in your pocket. You never really re kind of realize that how nice you always have it. Or, or if I'm out on a ride on one of the bikes and go, hey, I'd like to try this or that. I got our tune database on my phone. I can just, I can flash it in. I can try all this stuff. So that is something that we really, really have learned to love about it. It helps uh, with a lot of customers. Actually, to, to be completely honest, you'll probably agree. We, we take more phone calls with PV4 saying, hey, I got my tune. Is this really, is this done and right? But it's so seamless that it just seems everything is so much easier, like next level. And it takes a little while when you're used to working with something for, you know, 10, 15 years to move over. The other great advantage of a PV4 is, say you want to take it to a dyno tuner, chances are he might not even say, oh, I don't tune with PV4, I don't even know. Well, all you have to do is share your license and he can plug any PV4 or OG right in and it's going to see that license. So he can start tuning with whatever one of these units he's most comfortable tuning with. We're not afraid to say it. The dyno tuners, a lot of them, there's a lot of great tuners. A lot though are really behind on, I mean, some of this stuff's been on three, four, five years and they're not using the, the tool sets and features and uh, even the software is just fabulous, the stuff they can do now. So it, it's really on a dyno tuner front, it's equal between all three. It doesn't matter. This is really a through device. You're using the software on the dyno anyway. At the end of the day, the thing to note is that all three of these devices, the most important thing is that they can achieve the same result. There is no limitations with any of them. If you have the correct equipment, right software, especially if you have a Dynojet Dyno, when you're using any three of these devices, the outcome of tuning virtually any combination, literally any combination will be the same. The only other really things to note is that this uh, OG with its on-device adjustments does vary a little bit. These two are more catered towards, um, rather than being able to make actual tune adjustments, this one with the app, this one in software, it's actually more so for performing service routines and such if you pay a small licensing fee from Dynojet, usually about $30. Service routines things. meaning like bleeding brakes, yep. uh, diagnostics. I mean, it does a lot of the stuff the Harley Digital Tech has. Yep, you can really, run, really good. Run, uh, run certain tests on sensors and things like that. So it, it can, in theory, be used almost like a diagnostic tool. And PV4 actually also does have some enabling and disabling for certain switches and accessories like cruise control, fans, things like that. I'd anticipate that's probably coming for PV3, although it is live in the PV4 app. So Auto-tune, same thing. All three devices have on-device or app-specific auto-tune. And honestly, the auto-tune for PV4, I would say the best, best of them, the most accurate. It has some enhancements in it that make it really nice. Dino tuners shouldn't be ashamed that they've used the auto-tune stuff for a lot of years. It does, it works really good, it's really accurate. And on a dyno, you can use that data that you're developing in, in the histogram screens on the auto-tune apps and on the device, you know, use that same data with the dyno. And that's really what you're doing. And uh, I don't know, a lot of these tuners don't even know this, but that is all built into the dyno now. So there are application software called Tuning Link in the software that does the same stuff that the auto-tune did historically does it in dyno software to a, to a much higher level even. Yeah, and that's uh, the whole deal with Auto-Tune is that, right, it can be used with all these devices and with your stock O2 sensor, so virtually any bike besides early model twin cams that you're flashing with any of these, you can Auto-Tune even with just your stock O2s. They all do have upgrade paths for adding either an Auto-Tune Pro kit or a Target Tune kit. 
Uh, we do also have some support for Smart Tune Pro uh, for in incorporating those wideband kits yeah, the into our calibrations. Cal yep. Right. Uh, for, for some newer applications, there is some intricacies to making it work. We do prefer that it's uh, enabled with a Harley Cal beforehand, and it may not be compatible with Auto-Tune, uh, given the fact that it is a, a Harley wideband kit as opposed most, to Most of it works but, really good, though. Yep, it's it's yeah, pretty for, seamless. You can use the actually the Target Tune onboard Auto-Tune application with most Screaming Eagle Smart Tune Pros. Yep. Yeah, um, we'll we'll delve into that as well yeah. and more in a, a video yeah. where we'll break down Auto Tune versus Target Tune, what the application yeah. is, what wideband options you have with the Power Vision and, yeah. and all the rest. And we know this is a lot for everyone to absorb all the different devices and the features and all that. But what we see is there's so much misinformation and a lot of times it's not so much devices, it's the learning path. So many times we see the software or the apps out of date, uh, firmware is not updated. The most important thing we can say in related to that is when there are updates, whether it's a software or a firmware or like with the original part of the Tune database, make sure that stuff is always updated. If you're having an issue, a feature that doesn't work or something that's not how we say it is or, or you look for a feature that's not there, update your firmware update your software. Definitely the first step in virtually any electronic troubleshooting process is always going to be making sure that your stuff's up to date. So it's a good place to start. Speaking of software, another really common, there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of confusion out there. For one, people have been using this unit for so long they've been accustomed to using WinPV, which is the PowerVision version of software. And just to be clear, the WinPV is going to be the primary software you use only for this unit, the PVOG as you call it. That's going to be used to open and edit tunes. You can obviously send and receive them from the unit. That's going to be something that you use a Windows-based computer to do. On the other hand, you have these units right here. In most cases, more seamless to transfer things to and from. Uh, the PV4, it's done all right from your phone. You request a tune from us, we send a tune based on what account information you give us. It goes right to your app. You don't have to do anything on a computer, anything in right. your email. The, the PowerCore software, up. it incorporates the Donja Cloud into it. Good point. A lot of people don't understand the PV4 is fully tunable with software, like the other devices. Uh, they think, oh, because it doesn't have a USB, it can't connect to software. Well, everything's on the cloud. So as long as you have Wi-Fi, when I'm tuning, I'm typing, making adjustments to tune, save to cloud. On, on the dyno, I actually have the thing wired into CAN because it does have a CAN connector for the dyno and I can shoot it right down to the device into the ECU. If I'm on the dyno and I make adjustment to tune, save to cloud, I just pick up my phone. I usually have my phone right in my bars. Boom, hit the tune, flash it right straight in. Anything you can do on these other devices, you can do on this right straight over the cloud. It just doesn't have a wired connection to it. On the dyno, you can if you want. You don't even need to do it on the dyno if you want. You still can use the cloud and the Wi Fi because it just works so seamless and it does in real time. You can even do logging, you can do all that stuff right through, right over the cloud, right into the software. Super good. Nobody was more skeptical at first than, than us, especially when we're old school and so reliant on the original power vision but pv4 uh, it's it's worked so well and again there's been a few things um feature wise recently looked at the analytics and it's very heavily going to be ios um the android stuff it's all done in parallel but there are some some differences in what it takes to get the apps and everything done and approved for both so you're going to see that that ios leads android a bit and we understand we know that's uh something that hopefully dynojack can keep up and, and keep moving on. Original Power Vision, great as well. PV3 falls in between. It's almost like a bridge for us. If you're somebody that wants the latest generation product, but you're not mobile, cloud savvy, maybe, that's where the PV3 really fits good too. A lot of neat stuff with, with all of them. In the end though, we can not stress enough. You get the same tune, the same stuff with either of these products. Right, and like Jamie was talking about with Tuning Link and C3 software, whatever you might use that for to adjust PV4 tunes, those tunes are the same exact files you'll open and adjust with this, just the difference being you're not sending it wirelessly. This is a drive essentially. Yep. This unit also for customers who aren't needing to open, edit, look at tunes at all, just simply get them from us in their email to the device is also really seamless. You actually don't need any software. The PV3 acts like a hard drive when you plug it into your computer. So that's really nice. See a PowerVision drive appear, save the uh, file right to the folder, just like you would a, an SD card or a USB drive, whatever. Once you're done with that, unplug it, flash to the bike. So it is really easy. And that's, that's one that thing sense. that really separates the original PowerVision, the WinPV software. It is fully, 
fully integrated into C3, the newest stuff too. So a lot of people have continued to use the WinPV where we've used C3 for a long time and we use all three products within that. The one really nice thing about the new generation products is they use basic functions and prompts like through Windows. So copy, paste, again, it sees it as a drive. You can drop files, things like that. Whereas the WinPU youth earlier, you know, you had to read the tune out through the software and all that stuff where this thing, even if you don't, you don't even need to open the software with PV3, you can just drop, paste things in there. It's really, really nice in that respect. C3 is largely what we've moved to. We might still use WinPV for loading tunes and-, and It's, it's so and good like and that. solid. And we, we understand why people, a lot of people like it because it's very solid. And what that uh, enables us to do with all three of these units is use uh, Tuning Link, which is what we are kind of alluding to and, yep. and touched on a few times here already, which is basically, it, it's an on-device suite um, that's really similar to how AutoTune works, although not exactly the same. The scripts and, and things that it uses and equations are really similar. At the end of the day, it's just an in-software application that you use to collect data, funnel through it, and generate a new calibration. Basically, the, a tool that anyone in any tuning application anywhere. The new generation has, it really has some fast hot rod features and stuff for the advanced tuner people. Really, really good as far as logging and going back into the tune. You can be streaming and you can see exactly in the tune where that data point was or that timestamp at that point. A lot of really, really cool features, and that's really look forward to, to more. And that's all part of Dynos that have in the C3. You got the, the tuning products and the software and the Dyno all under the hood of one vehicle. It really, really makes it nice. Yeah, the day we're just trying to educate and make sure everyone's on the same page about uh, all the tuning functions and, and what we have available. So, yeah, if you have any questions, we're available at info at fuelmotousa.com or you can call us at 920-423-3309. We're open nine to five central, Monday to Friday, every week. Awesome, thank you.